So here's a philosophical question to ponder. When does a post-apocalyptic setting becomes and stops being post-apocalyptic? Uh, for example, is Fallout post-apocalyptic? On one hand, yes, since the story happens after a devastating nuclear war between global powers and many of the setting's themes in one way or another play with the idea of the old world and what lessons can you learn from it. On the other hand, this war happened, what, 200-400 years ago or something like that? Can we really consider the setting to be post-apocalyptic when the end of the world was that long ago? Do we consider our world to be post-apocalyptic because Europe lives on ruins of the Roman Empire? Do we consider Harry Potter or Indiana Jones or Dora the Explorer to be post-apocalyptic because the setting happens after the Great Flood. Is it the theme that decides if the story is post-apocalyptic or not? Because I'd still not consider Fallout to be that insofar as why I don't consider our world post-apocalyptic solely because racists exist. And I'm saying this because the topic of our current discussion is Sin Duality Noir, a 12-episode mecha anime and a part of a multimedia project whose setting implies some sort of world ending event happening before the anime, but for all intents and purposes the setting might as well just be like this without any need for a world-shattering event. But regardless, Regardless. The story of the show is frankly a bit banal. The world is fucked by the obligatory space alien mutant monster creatures thingies and also the rain contains concentrated piss, so the surviving humanity lives in these domes and enjoys a relatively comfortable life while pretty much all exploration outside of the world is done by drifters, these pilots of these mecha suits that need to be piloted by a pilot and a trusty android that are named Magus in this series, and I'm more than sure people have sex with these things because it is a topic of many a joke and direct implications. Whether be happy or groan because this shit is seemingly a regular occurrence in mecha media is up to you to decide. But yes, we follow Kanata, who is also the usual archetype for these sorts of shows incompetent virgin with a heart of gold that wants to find a lost city of Historia while everyone around him thinks he's fucking insane. He finds himself a sexy magus named Noir in the middle of some ruin and after some shenanigans he becomes her master, leading to more shenanigans culminating in a fight against an epic boss monster in Kanata saving the day. Oh, and Noir turns into a chocolate girl. Second part of the season comes in January 2024. And that's pretty much it in terms of the story. The biggest problem with it overall is that it is a very competently made anime and a good selling point for other multimedia stuff it tries to peddle to us, it has a very solid core and it executes it, if not flawlessly, then definitely with little faults that can be merely attributed to me being a jaded cynic. If you're a casual watcher or if this is your first anime in general, you will enjoy this immensely. Heck, you will probably enjoy it if you like mecha anime overall. The biggest problem with shows like these is that there's about two, three shows per average like this one per season. Hell, even the gimmick that this is a multimedia project isn't particularly new. Should it be? Not really. But there's nothing in it for people like me who have seen a lot of anime like this and are generally hard to impress. And that's kinda all I have to say about the show in general. Not much, but what can you expect me to say about a hot dog from a street vendor? Thank you I didn't catch syphilis after eating it. Mm.